In this video, I will walk you through how I would refactor a Jupyter notebook to take it from a place where it is um, hard to read, um, with a lot of implementation details and print statements and all other code smells, to take it from a place like this, where a lot of bugs can be introduced where, and also where I would be slowed down because I generally have a pretty hard time working with uh, such a large blob of code, into a place where is uh, code is extracted into modular functions and each of these functions are unit tested and um, yeah each of these functions have single responsibility and things like that and that's, that's the goal of this video to show you how we get from here to here um, we'll start by going through the process at a high level and then we will dive um, into a demo where you can watch and also code along if you would like to these steps are um, composable, meaning that you can compose it, take it in any order that works for you. If you would like to you know, add a test first before doing anything else, you can do that. And that's what, indeed what I'll do in this video. If you want to convert notebook as a Python file to the last thing, if that works for you, uh, you can also do that. So feel free to jumbo and move things around. Um, but this is my workflow and pick what works for you. The first thing we'll do is to run the notebook and ensure that it works. So that if we were halfway through refactoring, if something breaks, we would know that uh, for sure it is because of certain code change that we have and we won't end up wasting time fixing something that was already broken in the first place. Second, uh, we'll make a copy of this notebook. This is a very critical step because when I refactor, I find myself uh, feeling like emotionally attached to certain code. Like I might find that somebody might, you know, really want to see this data frame, for example, right? Um, so if it's, there's a copy somewhere, um, then I'm free to remove it from the code base um, if, if I think that it doesn't make it any better, right? It's just kind of noise, so I can remove it. Um, the third thing we'll do is to convert the notebook to a Python file. And this is because uh, in a, with, with a Python file, your IDE um, will be more helpful in allowing you to use shortcuts, to move lines around, um, to rename variables with one shortcut rather than having to copy and paste uh, Control find and copy paste at so many places. Um, yeah, in my other video on IDE tips, I talk more extensively on this, so you can check out that video. And the next thing we want to do is to remove print statements because print statements stand in the way of our refactoring. It prevents us from seeing what is the essence of the logic, what are the actual data transformations, and what are just kind of side effects and noise and you know print statements. Once we've removed that, we can clearly see uh, the data transformations and we can. it's easier for us to do our next step, which is to uh, list the code smells. And in my video on code smells, I talk in detail uh, what are they, what uh, some of the typical code smells in a data science code base. And you can go through that video to uh, see more in detail. But in this video, I've already listed uh, all of the code smells in this notebook so that we can begin to refactor. The important, it's important to uh, do this step because this becomes our refactoring to-do list. We start having opportunities to refactor at all these different places. So we fix them one code smell by one code smell in, to get to a better state where things are readable and tested and all of that. And here comes the refactoring cycle. Um, this is where we iterate and do it uh, as many times as needed. Uh, first, we identify a block of code to extract and then we write a unit test for it and we get the test to pass and once we have this modular function that is sitting outside of the notebook we can bring it into the notebook or the python file and just get it to work to run the whole notebook make sure that everything still works as it was originally and we make a commit so it's important to make small small commits and frequently so that we um, we get into the good habit of not having so much work in progress and a kind of visual clutter and you know, by, by making commits every time something works, something has been improved, we help to reduce our mental overhead. So we keep going and finally, um, we will add a functional test um, for the machine learning model to make sure that now our code base is completely tested and should anything degrade, regress, or um, get worse, the automated tests will tell us immediately, either locally or on uh, CI, on your, on your CI server. And yeah, that's it. So uh, let's get started. 